So today we are going to talk about carbon monoxide poisoning, right? So this is our today's discussion topic. So carbon monoxide poisoning is a potentially life-threatening condition that occurs when carbon monoxide gas is inhaled. You know, carbon monoxide is colorless and odorless gas, which makes it particularly dangerous because it can't be detected by human senses, right? See, it is produced by the incomplete combustion of various fuels, including gas, wood, propane, and kerosene, right? So the common sources of carbon monoxide exposure include automobile or boat exhaust, followed by smoke that's coming from fires, and household appliances like gas heaters or stoves that are not functioning properly. And this gas can be especially hazardous in, a, in enclosed or poorly ventilated spaces. The danger of carbon monoxide lies in its ability to bind with hemoglobin in the blood. You know, it's a molecule that normally transport oxygen. So if you look at the ability of carbon monoxide binding to hemoglobin with such an affinity is 200 times greater than the oxygen. So at such affinity power, it's going to bind with this hemoglobin molecule. And this binding is going to result in the formation of carboxyhemoglobin, COHP, right? So which see when you form this molecule is going to diminish the blood's capacity to carry oxygen to the tissues and organs despite the presence of adequate oxygen levels in the environment the blood cells can become starved of oxygen that leads to tissue damage and a variety of symptoms followed by Individuals suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning may present a range of symptoms that are often non-specific, meaning they can be mistaken for symptoms of other conditions. So these symptoms can include headache, dizziness, nausea, confusion, and general malaise. More severe poisonings of carbon monoxide can lead to ataxia, which is nothing but loss of coordination, followed by myalgias nothing but muscle pain, seizures, coma, and even death at severe cases. Notably, a red coloration of the skin is a rare and late occurring sign in carbon monoxide poisoning. The thing is, how are you going to diagnose this, right? So carbon monoxide poisoning involves measuring the levels of carboxyhemoglobin in the blood. Normal levels are typically less than 5% in non-smokers and less than 10% in smokers. Diagnosis can be complicated because carbon monoxide hemoglobin levels may not always correlate with the severity of symptoms or the prognosis of the patient. So you have to depend on additional diagnostic finding. And what are these additional diagnostic findings? So these include elevated lactate levels in the blood which indicate tissue hypoxia and other markers that suggest tissue damage, right? Followed by, how do you treat this condition? The mainstay of treatment for carbon monoxide poisoning is the administration of 100% oxygen, which helps to displace carbon monoxide from hemoglobin, allowing the blood, I mean allowing the red blood cells or allowing the hemoglobin to carry oxygen effectively again. So when you give 100% oxygen, you can displace the carbon monoxide binding to the hemoglobin so that the oxygen can bind, right? And you're going to reverse, right? Everything. So this treatment is continued until symptoms resolve. Now, what about severe cases where you have a very high levels of carboxyhemoglobin in your blood? So in that case, what we do, we are going to uh, have a chamber called see actually it's a pressurized uh, room or it's a pressurized chamber right where we uh, you are going to send the patient into to breathe pure oxygen right again so in cases of severe poisonings 
hyperbaric oxygen therapy which involves breathing pure oxygen in a pressurized room or chamber is considered. So this therapy is particularly beneficial in cases with high levels of carboxyhemoglobin levels as well as in cases where you have severe symptoms or when vulnerable populations like pregnant women are affected. In all these cases, you are going to prefer hyperbaric oxygen therapy. Overall, prompt recognition and treatment of carbon monoxide poisonings are critical to prevent potentially severe health outcomes. Right? This infographic right, is very helping us as a concise guide for the general public as well as healthcare professional to understand, diagnose and manage carbon monoxide poisoning effectively. Okay, so thanks to this image, right? So we meet in the next lecture with a new topic. Till then, stay tuned. Have a nice day.